What's up, y'all? I'm out here on the range on a warm, sunny day. Absolutely perfect day to have some fun and get some testing done out here. I've done one test so far that didn't turn out too well, so hopefully this one will be a little better. We're going to mix the weight classes up here a little bit and do a caliber versus caliber. So the jelly contraption is set up, ready to roll with the chronos and two blocks of gel. Now, again, I've done one test, and unfortunately, it acted up and went all out into this other block. A bunch of disruption in the back block that shouldn't have happened but I've got all this front section here to work with so I shouldn't have any problem with this one of course as y'all can see as always I'm working with my heavy clothing barrier that's got the layer of denim fleece and two layers of cotton t-shirt and what I'm testing on this one here is a couple of different rounds that I have tested in the past before but just under different circumstances never head-to-head -head like this I think I haven't used the heavy clothing on one of them uh, longer barrels so on and so forth just a whole different setup so I'm trying to go back and do some updates and put maybe a couple of calibers against each other so as you can see we got the nine mil and 45 acp in federal punch nine mils 124 grain the uh 45 acp is 230 grain which now y'all know my feelings i think that's a little heavy for a shorter barrel but i'm trying to find some that might work okay in these short barrels so i figured we'd use this one now both of these are just a brass case without the nickel plating so they're the newer black colored box i do have some of the older gold color box with the nickel plating but since you can't get the those currently i figured i'd use something that everybody could get right now as far as velocity on the box here they're saying 890 feet per second and that's definitely out of longer than what we're going to be working with here so those numbers definitely don't bode well for the performance of a 230 grain 45 acp but hopefully this stuff may be a little softer lead compound and do something for us and then for the nine mil same deal non nickel plated case there the ballistics on the box for this one is saying 1150 feet per second now again that's probably out of something longer than what we're testing with here today but hopefully we'll get somewhere close to that and speaking of what we're testing them out of we got the nine mil canic meta mc9 with the 3.1 inch barrel and then for the 45 i've got the glock 30 gen 4 with the 3.8 inch barrel so this should be a good update and a fun little head-to-head -head with this federal punch let me get everything set up and let's see what they can do all right let's see how fast this stuff's moving y'all i'm gonna do a five round average from each one starting with the nine mil first now like i always mention if you're not familiar with this lab radar you're going to get multiple velocity readings your large numbers at the muzzle and then you're going to have three yards which is roughly where the gel is here and then you also got 10 15 25 and 50. Now let's see what we do here the box again was saying 1150 i believe it was on these let's see how close we get to that 1077, 1089, 1092, did we get, yeah, yeah, we got a reading there, that was number four, I seen the other one change. And 1088, so definitely not the 1150. Let's check the average. All right, so looking back, that fourth one probably wasn't valid. I think all the numbers were exactly the same, so we probably didn't get a reading there. It registered it anyway for some reason, and I'm not gonna run another round because all of these are so close. It's gonna be about the same. So counting that, we had a five round average of 1,087. That gave us an extreme spread of 15 with a standard deviation of 6.1. So either way, we didn't hit that 1150. 1,087. I mean, that's probably pretty close. These punch, I believe, are a little bit softer, so hopefully we'll be all right with that. Let me get this reset, and let's see what the 45 does. All right, let's see what this 45 does. Remember, the box on this was saying 890, so that's probably out of a 5-inch barrel, so we definitely ain't going to see that here. Let's see what it gives us. 831. 818. 830, 818 again, and 836. So pretty funny, it's bouncing back between the 830-ish and 818. Let's see what the average was. All right, so our five round average that time from the 45 was 826 feet per second. We had an extreme spread of 18 with a standard deviation of 8.3. So right much slower than the nine, obviously, and slower than what the box said, 826. That's a little bit iffy for two. Well, that's real iffy for 230. Ain't no way around it. But hopefully this punch is, is built a little bit different. So 
826 there and if you remember on that nine it was a thousand eighty seven so you talking about what 261 feet per second difference faster from that nine mil so that's what 20 percent or so big big difference now not really significant as far as versus because you got a lot heavier this is truly a case of light and fast versus slow and heavy all that being said i'm a little bit worried for both of these but let's get everything set up and y'all know what time it is all right, y'all, it's Corvette versus Bel Air jelly time. We'll put one of each into the gel, starting with this nine right here. The nine, I feel like we might be okay with this. It's, it's gonna be iffy. I think this is moving about the same speed as that last nine test I did that did not do well at all, spoiler alert. Maybe this punch has got something for it. Let's see what happens. All right, that should have been perfect right there. Let's go see what we got. All right, so far so good down there, y'all, with that nine mil. This 45 ACP, though, it still got me really worried. This is moving slow for such a heavy round. But hopefully it does something here. That should have been a good one. Hopefully I didn't go too low. Let me go see what I got. All right, that right there is actually perfect. Completely intact, stayed completely off the bottom. Uh, only problem is I did go a little bit lower than what I wanted and it kind of got outside of the uh, chrono beam there. So I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna send one more round through there uh, against my better judgment because it's nice and clear and I'm probably about to get everything all jumbled up now, but I'm gonna try to kind of put it on the, on the back side of these other ones. But then again, I do have another track. Oh, uh, let's see. That was that wasn't no better than the first one, and it might have came out the side. Let me go take a look. I should have just left it alone, y'all. That thing went right beside that other one. Now it's harder to see than it was, and it went out the side. So I'm gonna send another one though, just because I'm gonna go up pretty high with this thing. All right, that was definitely high. I hope I didn't get in that other track. Let's go see what we got. All right, y'all, third time's a charm, I reckon. I personally think we got good performance from both of these. Now, it's a little bit messy and tricky to see, mainly just because of that big disruption in the back from the tumbling on the uh, previous test, but I'll pick you up, and I think you can get a good picture of what's happening here. So if we look right here, this track, that right there, the kind of darker color one, that was the nine mil. So it comes in, you can see, starts to expand immediately because it's got that nice spiral-looking action all the way through this first first block into the second block probably three to four inches and you do have some expansion the pedals are the uh, jacket pedals are expanded really nicely but it doesn't look like you got a whole lot of lead coming out with them and then as far as the 45 these two on the bottom that first one would have been completely valid it's kind of behind the other one so tough to see it looks just about like the disruption of the one that's up higher but comes in here you can tell again uh, immediate expansion it's dumping a whole lot of cloth both of these 45s are goes into this second block starts to curve down and this is why i sent another one just because it landed down here but it didn't get into the bottom at all and this one here has actually got some really nice looking expansion and still it has a bunch of cloth stuck to the front of it and then so after i finally decided to quit playing around and just go up high with it that one right up under here it's a little tricky to see because it's right next to all that big old tumbling disruption but it it's about the same size like I say, is this bottom one down here. Nice looking disruption, spiral action going on all the way through that first block, again into the second block. And this one's probably about an inch shy of this one down here at the bottom. But again, really, really nice expansion from what I can tell. So as far as the penetration on them, the nine mil here went out to exactly 19 and a quarter inches. So really nice penetration there. The 45s, we'll do this one on the bottom here first. 
This one on the bottom is out here at about 21 and a half inches. And then the one up here up at the top is about 19 and three quarters. So really, really nice penetration from all of them. And let's see if I can get you a little clearer look up close here. On the top there, that darker one, that's the nine mil. Right up under it is the 45 that we kept. And right up under that 45 is all that big disruption from the previous test. So I think at this angle, and then I'll let you see from above, you can kind of differ differentiate with that 45 but as you can see both of those really really nice comes on through here now the 45 is back behind you can see there it's going to be tricky but I'll give you an overhead too. There's your nine mil. As you can see, like I was saying, the, the uh, jacket is definitely peeled way back, but not a whole lot of lead with it. Now down here on the bottom, that's that first 45, but then if we go to the middle, that's the one that we were following there. And then from above, you definitely got a better view of that nine. As you can see, follow it through here into the second block. And there's your projectile. There's that 45. If we kind of try to follow it back, you can see it's totally separate from everything. It just got really, really close. If you look at the entrance there, you can differentiate what disruption is that 45 and what is all that behind it. All right, let's check out these projectiles, y'all. Really, really nice performance from these right here. I'm very surprised that they did so well. This one right here is the nine mil, obviously. These are the 45 ACP. So on the nine mil, you know, I talked about the jacket pedals uh, opening up, but the lead maybe not following it so much, but I don't know how much more lead could actually came with them because you can see that divot's not real deep. Now a little bit more could have, but again, that's just me nitpicking. You can see you got the P on the bottom for the punch. Uh, I think this did a fantastic job, absolutely fantastic job there. And there may be something to the idea that this punch lead is a softer type of compound because I've noticed on every test I've done, even against uh, putting them up against other rounds especially, it's a different color. You know, it may just be in my head and I might just be completely wrong and looking for something here, but I swear it seems like more of a matte, a softer gray, a matte color. It's not nearly as shiny as most of the other rounds, even when it get scuffed but again that could just be me looking for some kind of difference so nine mil there 45 acp again absolutely fantastic this was the one that was up higher this was the one that ended up on the bottom definitely more expansion from this one but both of them absolutely fantastic especially for the speeds that they were moving so let's get some weights on them i don't see anything in the gel so i don't think we lost any material the nine mil started at 124 and we've got 124.2 so nothing loss there the 45 acp started at 230 this one is at 231.0 so nothing lost this one here is at 230.7 so absolutely nothing lost from any of these and then let's get some sizes on them we'll start with the nine mil here you got 640 and 646 so really nice expansion there although now again most of it is jacket but still i mean that's expansion that's some metal there doing its thing uh then the 45 acp you got 694 and 697 so really nice expansion there and this other 45 you got 676 and 670 so again fantastic expansion from all of these and there you go y'all the federal punch in 9 mil and 45 acp absolutely great job by both of these in my opinion the 9 mil did a fine job but what i'm really impressed by is this 45 acp for a 230 grain round coming out of a short barrel at that speed for it to perform like this that's pretty impressive because y'all know it's difficult to get a 230 grain hp to expand and give you the penetration that you want especially out of a short barrel and these right here did it even the federal hst that i tested and now it didn't fail by any means but it, I, arguably this punch right here did as good if not better than that federal hst so in my opinion right here this is absolutely another winner as far as a 45 acp short barrel round all right, I'm gonna call it right there for what I think was a really good nine versus 45 short barrel test. Definitely glad to see both of these rounds do well. That's just one more round of each of these calibers that you got to choose from. Now, the nine did a great job. I know I kind of glossed right over that. It did a great job, it's perfectly fine. Nine is just kind of easy to find a good round for in shorter barrels. It's a whole lot easier than the 45. With a nine, unless you're looking for really, really hot stuff, just you know, pick from one of the half a dozen, dozen plus probably 
probably good rounds and go with it. But when it comes to a 230 grain short barrel in a 45 ACP, that's a whole different story. Y'all know from seeing these tests, it's very, very tricky to find a good one. And I think this punch right here is one of the best ones so far that I've tried, especially for a 230 grain. But let me know what y'all think down in the comments. Do any of y'all out there run this punch in either one of these calibers after seeing the performance out here? Has anything changed your mind either way? Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are. If you enjoyed the video, as always, reach down and hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on your notifications so you get notified when I upload new stuff. Check out them affiliate links down below in the video description. Like I always remind you, if you're doing some shopping and hit up those links, anything you buy after that, I get a kickback from them towards the channel. So I really do appreciate that. Again, a big thanks to all my range gang members and every single one of y'all for supporting the channel. I've got a couple of interesting things done so far and one more plan. So stay on the lookout for that. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay prepared, and I'll see you soon.